signs change our understanding of history. Here you see the so-called Danute script. Harold Harmon is the world's leading expert on ancient scripts and languages. According to him, these are the oldest writings in the world, invented by an ancient civilization that existed in the Balkans 8,000 years ago. I've studied Mesopotamian writing systems, Egyptian writing system, and uh, ancient Chinese writing. And only after studying them very carefully, I made a decision that what you have in Southeastern Europe in the Neolithic, that was writing too. This implies that the first high culture in the world originated in the Balkans. And then the trouble began, yes. So Mesopotamia would no longer be called the cradle of civilization. The ancient culture in the Balkans is thousands of years older. The tablets of Tartaria were found in Romania and they are dated 5500 BC. They are dated now solidly uh, in a period when the Sumerians did not even know that they would become Sumerians. Thousands of artifacts support his theory. But the Mesopotamian scholars reject his idea of an early civilization in Europe. I am a Mesopotamian scholar and I still am, but it's only I put things in perspective. For his academic colleagues, the signs of the Danube script are just decoration. Even though 700 different characters are known, which approximately matches the number of hieroglyphs. They are partly against it because it is too sensational. It would simply shatter their world. We live in a world in which people think they know everything. New discoveries outside our conventional wisdom are often rejected before serious discussion. I hope I can uh, inspire them. There is so much sensational knowledge about the Danube script and the Danube civilization and that should be taken into consideration to create a new paradigm of civilization research. If the academic world accepts his theory, Harold Harmon will have found a new answer to a question as old as humanity itself.
The summer solstice is predominantly a matriarchal celebration of the sun. Its roots are tied to the foundation of fertility. The honoring of the sun in the Balkans dates back to thousands of years in the first Neolithic farming settlements in the world. The ritualistic traditions of midsummer is dramatized the most in Bulgaria. Celebrated on June 24th, Enyovdan is a commemoration of the Thracian lore with its relation to solstices and equinoxes. As stated by Old Bulgarian Tale, the sun oscillates on the rise of dawn on June 24th, and whoever witnesses this oscillation is granted good health throughout the remainder of the year. During the Thracian era, Enyovdan involved wine as an offering to the gods. Water is believed to have many magical healing powers throughout the Balkans during this frame of time. It is believed that one must bathe in natural running water after sunrise to receive a dose of well-being, or leave an offering to the gods, much like in Bosnia where women will leave clothes on branches by streams or place them within the water to drift away. In Romania, the summer solstice is known as Dragaica or Sanzian. This is too celebrated on the 24th of June. The folktale goes that Sanzianelli are young girls or fairies who give their magical powers to flowers and herbs, this being fertility, allowing unmarried women to find their destined one. Draga is a word used in areas with Thracian and Dacian influence translating to deer. Sanzianelli comes from Latin meaning Santa Diana, which is the Roman goddess of the moon and protector of virgins. Dragaica personifies the memory of the lunar and agricultural goddess. Dragaica evolved into Hera and Artemis in the Greek pantheon, as well as Diana and Juno in Roman. In each culture, women usually dress in red or white or both, along with wearing flowers they have picked as a crown, walking down the streets in search for a husband, and in gain of superior fertility and health. In Serbia, the day of Vidas is celebrated, Vidovdan, on June 28th. Going back to 1389 to the Battle of Kosovo, which was fought on midsummer, the name Saint Vitas was coincidentally given to the fallen Prince Laza. Vidasus was the supreme Illyrian god who has a dominant role in fertility. Thana, the goddess of fertility, is usually depicted along Vidas. Each nation of the Balkans holds the same folklore, fables, and legends which have been preserved since Neolithic times. May each of your midsummer celebrations have a sprinkle of fairy dust.
Welcome to the Institute for the Study of the Ancient World and to our exhibition, The Lost World of Old Europe. I'm Roger Bagnall, the director of the Institute, and I could not have imagined two and a half years ago when we opened our doors that New York University would be playing host to an exhibition like this. When I was first interviewed to be director, I asked how far back in time the Institute's scope would be. Would it go as far as the Neolithic? And people said, oh no, 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 we're all about the historic periods. Well, two and a half years later, we are in the Neolithic. We have moved back 5,000 years from what we thought was our core, and we have embraced a world that I, for one, didn't know existed when I was educated many years ago. Nobody ever talked about the fact that there was a great civilization in Europe well before the pyramids, before the ziggurats, before the Mycenaeans, before Periclean Athens, before all of that, there was an extraordinarily, extraordinary civilization in the Danube River Basin. And that's what we have been able for the first time to bring to the United States and welcome you to. Okay, I'm David Anthony. I'm a professor of anthropology at Hartwick College where I teach in the anthropology department. I'm guest curator for this exhibit, uh, which is The Lost World of Old Europe at the Institute for the Study of the Ancient World. And we are in Gallery 2 uh, looking at an exhibit of pottery from the Cucuten culture. This exhibition brings together artifacts from 12 different museums in three countries, Bulgaria, uh, Romania, and Moldova. It is the first time these artifacts have been exhibited in the United States. None of them have been here before. They are artifacts from the first civilization of Europe. Um, they date between about, the oldest objects in here are actually from about 6,000 BC. Uh, but most of the objects date between 5,000 and 4,000 BC. They re represent a cycle of cultures that existed in southeastern Europe, what centered in what is today Bulgaria and Romania, um, that rose to an extraordinary height of sophistication and achievement, and then fairly suddenly collapsed and were replaced by cultures that were at a much uh, lower and simpler level of development. So in that sense, they truly are uh, lost uh, cultures. That's, the lost, that's where the lost world of old Europe comes from. Outstanding objects from the show. I would say first, there is an entire gallery of female figurines, which have become quite famous. Uh, and they've been featured in works by the archeologist and comparative mythologist Maria Gimbutas in a series of coffee table books uh, the language of the goddess, the civilization of the goddess, the gods and goddesses of old Europe. Uh, and it was really Maria Gimbutas at UCLA who came up with the term old Europe uh, in her first book of this type, uh, published in 1974. Um, so there's an entire gallery of figurines that she is focused on as the um, origin of what she presented as a kind of utopian ideal society uh, that was organized and dominated by uh, females uh, whose values of uh, nurturance and aesthetics uh, dominated the entire society. These ideas of hers have uh, generated a very large following of uh, uh, women who are very highly dedicated uh, to her idea of this almost a, a utopia that existed in the Neolithic of ancient Europe. This exhibit is the first time these figurines have been brought to the United States so that people who are interested in these ideas can see them. Uh, the idea that uh, old Europe constituted an idealized world without violence where women were dominant uh, and uh, values of um, aesthetics uh, and nurturance uh, were the center of the society is highly debated. And we present that debate also in this exhibit. Um, the other things that are uh, really important in this exhibit are uh, the evidence for a, a politically stratified uh, society in old Europe. At one time it was thought that these cultures were egalitarian, with no real division between rich and poor. Uh, but to my right uh, is an exhibit of the gold from Varna. Varna is the uh, richest cemetery known in the entire world, uh, dated to uh, 4500 BC. 
Uh, it is the richest early cemetery. It's the richest cemetery known in the world dated anywhere uh, between, before 3500 BC. There's more gold in the cemetery of Varna than has been recovered from all of the rest of the old world uh, put together uh, before 3500 BC. Uh, and the gold at Varna uh, is found in only a few graves. There are 310 graves in the cemetery of Varna. Only 60 of them contain gold, and the great majority of the gold was contained in four extraordinarily rich graves, one of which is partially exhibited uh, in the case to my right and in the case uh, beyond that. Uh, so the realization that these societies were politically stratified with uh, rich people and a sort of a middle class and poor people is an idea that came into the consciousness of archaeologists through the excavations of the Varna Cemetery. The gold of Varna has never been displayed in the United States before it's here for the first time. Another highlight of the show is the invention of copper metallurgy. Uh, the invention of metallurgy is something that affected all of us, uh, not just the societies of old Europe. And it was these people who figured out how to extract copper from greenish and bluish rocks. Uh, really a magical process by pounding these rocks up, mixing it with charcoal, and then raising it to 1,083 degrees centigrade inside a closed kiln. Uh, once you did that, what you had put in as rock and charcoal came out as pure copper. A, a magical process that allowed the people of these societies to produce unlimited quantities of copper. Uh, immediately, massive, large-scale mining began. Some of these mines are 90 feet deep, uh, carved with antler picks uh, down into limestone and dolomite uh, rock to extract uh, the copper ore. The copper that was extracted from the ore was then given to specialized craftsmen who melted it, used the molten copper to pour into molds. You can see cast-made objects, some of the earliest objects made of molten copper poured into casts in the world are on display in this uh, uh, gallery. For a favorite piece, you, one of the favorite pieces is uh, The Thinker in Gallery 1, uh, which is one of the most famous pieces of prehistoric uh, European art. It's on the cover of art books. It's been included in art books uh, all over the world. It's probably the most famous piece uh, in this exhibit. But it's famous partially because it was excavated a long time ago, and it's had a long time to sort of uh, slowly sink into the consciousness of the Western world. Many of the other objects in this exhibit are just as interesting, or even more interesting in, in my estimation, but people don't know about them. And they haven't been known for so long. So there hasn't been time for them, or the opportunity uh, for them to get into the consciousness of people from the West. Uh, the gold of uh, Varna is certainly one of the highlights of this show. And it's a great coup that we have that here. This extraordinary table full of Kukuteni ceramics is another highlight of the show. The aesthetic sophistication and the technological sophistication that are contained in these pots uh, are based on the same pyrotechnology that made it uh, possible to smelt copper and invent a copper age. Uh, so the pottery and the copper that you see around are intimately connected in the same uh, sophisticated pyrotechnology. And they're probably connected to women, that's true. Uh, it's probably female potters who were the first people to realize how you could extract copper from these rocks, which had to happen in high temperature kilns, initially developed to make pots like this, and then ultimately uh, transferred and used to smelt copper. Vincia, 
najdrevnija civilizacija Evrope. Kivir, Vinča i mnogi drugi lokaliteti širom Balkana koja izgleda svedoče o tome da je prva civilizacija na tlu Evrope nastala baš tu, u slivu Dunava kroz današnju Srbiju. Već nekoliko godina mnogobrojni istraživači, a i nekolicina vrlo popularnih YouTube kanala, svedoče nam o ovome na razne načine. U svakom slučaju, centar, a možda i najvažniji lokalitet za odključavanje ovih seznanja, svakako je lokalitet Vinče, nadomak Beograda. Is the world's leading expert on ancient scripts and languages. According to him, these are the oldest writings in the world. Invented by an ancient civilization that existed in the Balkans 8,000 years ago. I've studied Mesopotamian writing systems, Egyptian writing system, and uh, ancient Chinese writing. And only after studying them very carefully, I made a decision that what you have in southeastern Europe in the Neolithic, that was writing too. This implies that the first high culture in the world originated in the Balkans. And then the trouble began, yes. So Mesopotamia would no longer be called the cradle of civilization. The ancient culture in the Balkans is thousands of years older. The tablets of Tartaria were found in Romania and they are dated 5,500 BC. They are dated now solidly uh, in a period when the Sumerians did not even know that they would become Sumerians. Thousands of artifacts support his theory. But the Mesopotamian scholars reject his idea of an early civilization in Europe. I am a Mesopotamian scholar and I still am, but it's only I put things in perspective. For his academic colleagues, the signs of the Danube script are just decoration. Even though 700 different characters are known, which approximately matches the number of hieroglyphs. They are partly against it because it is too sensational, it would simply shatter their world. We live in a world in which people think they know everything. New discoveries outside our conventional wisdom are often rejected before serious discussion. I hope I can uh, inspire them. Kada se pre jednog veka moćni Dunav povukao u svoje korito, 1908. godine ostavi za sobom veliki dar čitavom čovečanstvu. Čeprkajći po obali, izvesni deda Panta zvani Čeprkalo iz naselja Vinča, pronašao je čudnu glinenu figuru. Radoznali starac nikada pre nije slično ništa video, pa je u potrazi za objašnjenjem svoje otkriće odneo u Narodni muzej u Beogradu. Nije ni slutio da u svojim rukama drži figurinu napravljenu pred kraj kamenog doba rukama pra čoveka. Arheolozi su od tada sa velikim uzbuđenjem počeli sa razotkrivanjem mnoštva novih slojeva civilizacije koje je u sebi sačuvao jedan spolja sasvim običan brežuljak u Vinči. Utvrdili su da se na to mesto nalazilo najveće naselje iz doba Neolita staro više od 7000 godina i pronašli u njemu ostatke mnogih kultura. Ovo nalazište dokazalo je da se 7000 godina pre nove ere na to mesto nalazila utvrđena metropola. Smatra se da je ona bila centar tadašnje civilizacije koja se proštirala širom današnje Bosne, Srbije, Rumunije, Bugarske, Crne Gore, Makedonije i Grčke. U Vinči je pronađeno pravo bogatstvo najrazličitijih oružja i oruđa od kamena i kostiju, posuđe, ritualne vaze, nakit, mnoštvo figurina, ostaci preistorijskih kuća kao i veliki broj drugih predmeta izređenih ovde ili donešenih iz udaljenih oblasti. Ono što je više od svega čini specijalnom jeste veliki broj identičnih predmeta koji ukazuje na to da su ljudi na ovim prostorima već u kasnom kamenom dobu imali neku vrstu standardizovane proizvodnje. Bili su mnogo, mnogo civilizovaniji nego što su prvi mah mislilo. Istraživanja govore da su stanovnici Vinče živjeli urbanim načinom života veoma blizu jedni drugima. Ali mi ovde nećemo o tome pričati, to je sada već poznato mnogima, a i drugi su nekako pozvani i stručni da govore o detaljima vezane za civilizaciju Vinče. 
Ono što mi želimo, pošto ove video ima i engleski prevod, je da sumiramo nekoliko bitnih činjenica i da našim i ljudima iz celog sveta damo jasan putokaz o lokaciji Vinče, kao i linkove u opisu ovog videa do videa i članaka gde mogu da se više informišu o detaljima. Pažnju da ukoliko odete do Vinče, nažalost tamo vas neće dočekati nikakve ekskluzivnost, čak bit ćete verovatno zbunjeni što tamo i nema ničega posebno vezanog za arheologiju, istoriju, muzeje, turističke ture i sl. To je naša realnost. U Srbiji kao da nikog nadležnog puno ne zanima što tu nadomak Beograda se nalazi jedno od najvažnijih arheoloških lokaliteta sveta. Ali nećemo kukati. Na isti način kao egipatske piramide, vinčanska kultura nastavlja da inspiriše umove u potrazi za odgovorima u poreklu i nastavku ljudske civilizacije. Pojedina njena naselja premašila su veličinom i brojem stanovnika ne samo sva istovremena neolitska naselja, već i prve gradove koji su znatno kasnije nastali u Mesopotamiji, Egeji i Egiptu. Najstarija pismenost, kalendar, metalurgija, otkriće točka, to je sve deo vinčanske kulture daleko pre Asirije, Mesopotamije i drugih. 15 km istočno od centra Beograda na desnoj obali Dunava nalazi se arheološki lokalitet Belo Brdo u Vinči, na kome je otkriveno jedno od najvećih preistorijskih naselja u Evropi. Okvirno trajanje vinčarske civilizacije procenjuje se na oko 8000 do 4000 godina pre nove ere. Vinča nije bila kolonija Grčke i Rima, nego su Grčka i Rimska civilizacija nastale na razvalinama Vinče. Harald Harman, vodeći svetski ekspert za drevne jezike i kulture, jedan je od onih koje ne samo da je to javno izrekao, već je napisao u svojoj knjizi Zagonetka Dunavske civilizacije, otkriće najstarije kulture u Evropi. Njegov rad, kao i istraživanja brojnih drugih stranih naučnika o ovoj temi, gotovo su potpuno nepoznati široj javnosti na našim prostorima. Iako je danas jasno da je vinčarska civilizacija bila prva civilizacija Evrope, a možda i sveta. Da su najstariji točak, kalendar, kuća sa centralnim grejanjem nađeni ovde na Balkanu, da samo jedan lokalitet u Srbiji ima više figurice nego čita svet u tom periodu, da je u samo jednoj grobnici u Bugarskoj nađeno više zlata nego u celom svetu za tu istu epohu. Američki lingvista Sean Wien i svetski priznati paleolingvista Radivoje Pešić uspeli su na temelju fragmenta iz Vinča da rekonstruišu prvo poznato ljudsko pismo. Prvo topljanje rude i prvi rudnici nađeni su u Srbiji i Bugarskoj, prvi astronomski observatorium nađeni u Makedoniji. Vinča je bez sumnje bila tehnološki napredna i razvijena civilizacija koja je svoj utice širila širom sveta. Pismo i rudarstvo je Vinčin su dar čovečanstvu. Ono što je još fascinantnije od tehnološke razvijenosti tog društva je njegov način života, shvatanje sveta i čovekove uloge u njemu. Gotovo je sigurno da skoro 2000 godina tu nije bilo rata. Pitate se da li je moguće?